Welcome to the new episode of this segment, Empower Your Life, where the aim is all about bringing positivity, motivation, aspiration, and encouragement towards your goals or dreams that you have wanted to pursue for a very long time. Our next guest, she's a mom of two with a big goal to do the best for her kids and also contribute to reducing waste making our planet better than we found, and for our better future generations as well, like her kids. With the idea of her product that she recently launched or created, also with a lot of love, care, the the idea of helping people in need, and also to help empower women, she turns her passions into a business because she believes that each one of us has a role to play, whether that's big or small on this planet. And I truly support it and I agree with that. So this is why I call this episode Channeling Passions into a Business with a Purpose with Kiki and Green. So without further ado, let's all welcome the powerful woman behind the Kiki and Green, Rupal Panchal. Hi, Rupal. Hi. <laughs> that was such a lovely introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very thank happy you. to be here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and I know, um, as I mentioned always, you're busy, and um, I appreciate your time, and I appreciate that you accepted the invitation, <laughs> so I'm very grateful. Yeah, I'm very you. happy to be here. Yes, that's great. So how are you? How's your family? How's UK overall? Oh, we're doing good. Things here in the UK are easing up a little bit, but I guess as, as time goes by, we'll, we'll see if that was a good idea or a bad idea, but... But things are looking positive. Um, I think soon we won't need our masks as much, which is which is great. But as long as hopefully we get some good weather, because at the moment it's been pretty rainy in the UK. But um, the family's all good. The kids are lovely and crazy <laughs> as always. But we love yeah. them. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great to know. Kiki and Green, so uh, share with us uh, the story of how everything started about yourself. What's the inspiration behind uh, Kiki and Green and also um, why reusable pads? Uh, and yeah, so share with us. So I think um, in the pandemic, I, I think I'm probably not the only person that feels like this, but I think we all had a lot of time to think about, you know, what we're doing, what we're doing with our lives. Are there other things that we want to accomplish and things? Yeah. So, um, although I, so I am a qualified optometrist. I still love my job. I still like caring for my patients, looking after them. But I, I think a part of me has always wanted to have my own business. Um, but any business I had, I never wanted to have a business where it was just a business where, you know, you're just making money. Money, yeah. I mean, everyone is different, but I know for myself, if I had a business that was just earning me money, it didn't matter how much it would be, but eventually I, I would never feel, I would, I personally would never be fulfilled by that. Yeah. So if, if I ever had a business, I always had ideas, but I one thing that I think is, something that I think is really important is everything to do with climate change. I think it's, a lot of mothers might agree with me when you have kids and you think about what's happening to the world and what will it be like when they're going to be 50 or 60 years old, you know, you, you know, I think the more you learn about it, you realize that if there's, if there's something that I can do, even just a small thing, then mm -hmm. I should do it. And another thing that's always really important to me and something that really speaks to my heart is especially like empowering women. Mm -hmm. And and there's there's a, I think there's a lot of women out there that really do need a lot of help and just need someone that can sort of, you know, like it's like they just need someone to give them a helping hand. Mm -hmm. And I just I felt like these are two things that were really important to me. And I felt like what what can I do? And I then I then I 
did a bit of market research and I looked into things like reusable reusable period pads and I was like this is something that I could really I really feel like I could work with and I felt like there was a big gap in the market because there were some companies that do reusable period products and they were amazing they had they are they're still really amazing they've got great branding they've got great products but their price point is, is quite high mm -hmm. and I, I always think about like a young girl who yes. cares about the environment she mm -hmm. wants a nice premium product you know she might be just starting out on her period she might be just a few years in she, she's gonna want something nice and I felt like for them to be able to afford paying like 50 or 70 pounds in one go it's gonna be a lot for them for it to last for their whole cycle um, and then there was other pads that I found that were definitely a lot cheaper but would I want to buy those I felt like personally I felt they didn't look very nice what was the material <laughs> like there, there wasn't a company in between no. that had a that I felt personally that had like a premium product you could trust the branding and you knew that the pads looked really nice so mm -hmm. that was what I followed my heart and I followed my gut instinct and we launched back in March and within just over a month we completely sold out yeah and our, our really our goal is to make period products look beautiful you know like all these other mm -hmm. companies we we think about like every you know i feel feel like with especially the disposable pads you know it comes in the worst packaging ever it makes so much noise and they, <laughs> they you know like to open them and it's just and it's like a, a white pad and even the way they they talk about them is like this is a sanitary product so you know we don't use those words in our product because sanitary means like a period is a dirty yeah. thing and it's not it's completely it's natural but yes. you know happens to like billions of women all over yeah. the world every <laughs> single day you know it should yes. be something that people feel like weird about so i felt like it it's time now for like a new era where like period products they're things that we should be able to talk about we shouldn't be, be embarrassed like getting a, a wet bag out of our yeah. bag so <laughs> that's that's why um i was talking to a friend the other day and i was talking about how it was so nice how you said that you took the wet bag out and you didn't even feel embarrassed because they look beautiful and now yeah. that was that really made me happy because that's exactly what we want to do you know make a product that really just just feels natural just to pull out of your bag and just looks nice so that's good that's good so what about the so you talked about the empowering women and of course um for those people who haven't uh, visited your website where is the name coming from so kiki and green the name for the company comes from um so i have two two children Mm -hmm. uh, Kian, my son, and Kiara, my daughter. So Kiki is because of Kian and Kiara. Yeah. And green, green is because, you know, green, the environment, we care about yeah. the environment. That's what the, the whole thing. So I, I'm one of those people that's a bit sentimental. I like to have something with meaning. And so that's where Kiki and green come from. Yeah. That's and we love nice. it. And my son loves it because he's, if anyone ever asks him, he's like, yeah, do you know Kiki and green is because of <laughs> Kiki and, and Kiara. So that's our name. So yes, oh my God, they're already proud. Privileged. Yeah. Yes, yes, very good, very good. And and very uh, powerful uh, and inspiring uh, story of how you actually come up with that idea of creating this product. And it's true because um, I believe that you know, even when I started to become more conscious with, with the products that I use or bought, then I started to see it on the website that uh, a lot of people actually don't feel comfortable of talking, you know, period. And uh, also the idea of having reusable pads. I don't know. I mean, in my opinion, this is just my experience. Not a lot of my circle of friends really uh, are aware of these uh, reusable pads. And I think it's just because they don't see that they're actually a stylish <laughs> and you're not feeling like embarrassed whenever you're taking out at least, at least like what you mentioned earlier that yeah. since you want to make sure that it's in between and there, that's it. I mean, people will see it once they visited your website. So yeah. thanks, thanks for, I, I, for that info. 
Yeah, and I think as time goes by, these things will become people will, I think, naturally will become a bit more conscious of like what they're buying and the environment. And um, so things like um, there's like cups or there's reusable oh, yeah. like period pads. So they're the main things. But with with both of them. I think the main reason why if someone is ever a bit afraid to use them, it's just because they just don't know how to clean them. Yes. So, and, and once they know and they try it a few times, then they realize that actually this isn't too bad. And you don't have to swap your whole cycle. You know, you could like do half and half. If you're just at home, you could use a reusable one. And then if you're out, you can, if you want to use a disposable until you're, yes. you feel a lot more comfortable. That's what I would say to a lot of people, or maybe just use them at nighttime or, but then once people know how to care for them, um, I think then they're, they're really happy. There's loads of people that we have that just thought like, okay, let me just buy like a medium pack and see how I go. And then a lot of people just say, this is so much nicer. And, and it is so much more comfortable. It is. Um, it's so much healthier for you because a lot of people just don't know, number one, the impact that all these um, disposable, disposable pads have. Because disposable pads, each pack is made up of around four plastic bags. Hmm. Yeah. And, and lots of people don't know about these things. So they'll be, they'll go to the grocery store and they'll say, okay, no, I've got to take my reusable bags. I can't just buy a plastic bag. Or when they're shopping, they'll think about how can I cut down on plastic? But then they don't realize that when they buy some of these products, they have so much plastic in them anyway, like disposable pads. Um, and also I think once they get used to the, the cleaning, they find the, the comfort is a lot better. And also the, the chemicals that are inside disposable pads, people don't know them and they just, you just have to do your research and you realize um, a lot of the cramping and things like that, that women get, they're, defi they're definitely not made uh, better by using a disposable pad. They're definitely gonna make things like that were so for some women not all women but it's definitely not I mean we we don't put we don't like to put certain chemicals in our body or yes. eat them so we just didn't know with the 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 tissues that we have our female tissues that we have down there are some of the most absorbent tissues in our whole body mm -hmm. so we don't realize the chemicals that we put down there that come in disposable pads but I think it's all about awareness I yes. think women are learning so much about these things and when you read about these things on social media it's really great as well because uh, without it nobody knows we just, it's just been the norm for a long time to buy disposable pads but um, I remember speaking to my mum and my mum was just saying that we have like this disposable culture mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not the world can't handle disposable culture and she was just saying like back in the day when she used to live in India she said that's what they used to have when they had their periods they just yeah. had I mean she was obviously saying your pads are made so amazing she said but back in the day they just used to use some sort of cloth or something oh, yeah. that they put on their period anyway so yeah I totally yeah. agree with you and you you mentioned it everything that I was about to ask you the awareness <laughs> And the awareness and also, yeah, I mean, awareness for most of the women and the, the, the norm, the culture that once you talked about, oh, it's, it's normal. You know, if you have cramping if, each time that you have period, it's normal. Where in fact that we don't know that that causing from the disposable pads that yeah. we've been using, right? Yeah, it could definitely be made worse by a disposable pad. So. Yeah, so it's great to know. And uh, this is why... One of the positive sides, in my opinion, uh, COVID bring us will be awareness for all of the people that uh, continuously online, you know, looking at online, at least for all the small businesses like yours who have, I mean, advocate sustainable lifestyle. So basically, it's a great path or start to bring more information that, hey, yeah, this is why it's good. So... Speaking of a sustainable or healthier lifestyle, we both practicing healthier lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I just want to have uh, like a point of view from your side, from your experience or your opinion. Why do you think that it's important uh, 
uh, bringing awareness right, to most of the people. Uh, why do you think it's important to bring awareness of practicing healthier lifestyles, especially in our modern <laughs> type of lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, I think it it really is so so crucial because we all have really busy lifestyles now, mm -hmm. and I think people are just in the sort of idea that I will you can just get like a takeout or something like that but nothing is ever gonna be I think so nothing will ever be you know making food at home because a lot of the food if you just buy like packaged bought food I mean some of them are great yeah. but some of them they definitely have a lot of chemicals in there and I, I like to read a lot of this I like to read into a lot of this stuff so I know like, I don't know if you know very much but about your gut microbiome oh yes so and it's so important because as, as far as our body knows our body doesn't know that we live in this modern world mm -hmm. uh, our body our body just thinks that we should be living in a jungle somewhere and we should just <laughs> be eating like fruit and veg and natural yeah food every day and and I think especially from speaking for myself um when you have such a busy lifestyle mm -hmm. I think food is is sometimes people think food is just something like right let me just eat at my desk quickly and I'm done but mm -hmm. for me it's very much like food should be something that nourishes my body mm -hmm. and and it should be something that gives me energy because especially if you want to do really good in a business or you want to be really great as a mom or with your family or any anything in life, if you're not fueling yourself, you can't be healthy, you can't be happy, you can't be energetic. So it's going yeah. to be really hard for you to perform in the other aspects of your life as well. So it all just, food comes first, you know, for me. I love it anyway, but food comes first for me. It's a big, yeah. big thing. and everyone's body's different so i think um i i never say like you should anyone should follow a specific diet because food that my body might like and my microbiome in my gut might like is very different to another person so true true i agree uh because you know i mean back then i wasn't as conscious as right now that uh you know also when you kind of younger and you don't feel like oh it, yeah right you just try you know, it's like i'll eat pizza and ice cream every day and i will feel fine like like my kids they can definitely eat whatever they want to and the next day if i do the same i'll be like yeah i did have a bit of junk food so that's probably why i feel you know i feel okay but i feel a bit rough today but with the kids they'll they'll be fine nothing will happen to them you know it's just I think as you do get a bit older, you, you're more conscious, aren't you? And you sure. want to look after yourself. Yeah. 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 And also because of the pandemic, I think it's a way also a call for every one of us that healthier lifestyle, in my opinion, really. Uh, and also we talked about it, like, you know, the skin and the aura. Oh, I, think that's yeah, really from, <laughs> yeah. I think that's really like how you take care inside and it show yeah. out. And your skin is your largest organ. So if you are, I know there's lots of creams and things out there, but I really try not to put too many, like if, I, if I'm if i gonna use anything for my skin, I like to know what's in there. Yeah. Um, but I think your skin is your largest, largest organ. So if you're eating well, your skin looks good, then the inside is gonna be good and your skin will just naturally it's going to be better as well yes i agree i agree with that <laughs> that's why I, I, I always i have this thing where i just really believe that you you either at some point you're going to be paying for something so you either eat however you want to have loads of alcohol indulge as much as you want to but later on you'll be paying in another way with medication as you get older so i think you just have to find the right balance you know yeah, I always have this, uh, my favorite quote when it comes to food. You are what you eat. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. People out there that really inspired how uh, you turn your, your, your passions into a business like you have started now. For those people who knew already their passions, do you have kind of two or three uh, tips or advice that you can share with us, things that they need to consider before jumping and just like, let's open a business, you know, with a passion. Is there something that 
before you started before that you have considered first that you can share with us? I think whatever, whether it's a business or, you know, like a job or a change in career or something, any, any endeavor that you're going to do in life, I always think it should be something that within you is, you know, you have to be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Because with, so for me with Kiki and Green, that's, I know that's going to be a long-term thing because for me, it's like, it's completely lined up in with what I believe. Like Kiki and Green, we do, we have a partnership with Eden Reforestation. Mm -hmm. So ev every time someone buys a product, there's going to be a tree planted at the same yeah. time. So, so now we have like, 2,300 and something yeah. that have been planted now and that was only with like one and a half month worth of sales so imagine what we'd wow. be able to do in a whole year or a few years and then soon we're going to be um, partnering up with the charity so we can start doing work towards period poverty in the UK and in some other countries as well so for me, that's like my driving force. I think any business you have or anything you want to go into, you always have to think about what, but why am I doing this? You know, <laughs> it has to be, you have to have something that every day is going to be, because especially with business, there's going to be things that go wrong or, True. you know, like I was just saying to you with the pandemic and deliveries, you know, <laughs> when we had our first shipment, the, they said, yeah, the, you're going to get all the, the delivery of all the boxes. They said everything is going to be here in a month. Mm -hmm. And it actually took two months. But mm -hmm. all these all these things, I mean, that's like getting to the last step. But even building the business, you know, mm -hmm. um, doing all these things. There'll be things where people will say, okay, you can't do it this way. I'll be, and then, you know, there's loads of things where you're just like, but I, I need to have it this way. Mm -hmm. And there'll be loads of challenges. I mean, if anyone tells you they built a business and it was like so easy, nothing happened to them, but they were, there's always going to be challenges. But I kind of feel like that's life in general. There'll, there'll always be challenges, but it's up to you if you want to overcome them mm -hmm. and you'll be able to overcome them if what you're doing is important to you yes so i yeah. think yeah i think it's like with with anything if it's not important to you then you're not you're not going to do it eventually you will find an excuse for not doing it so <laughs> my, my main advice would be if you're gonna go into a business or something then it has to be there has to be a big why you have to think about why are you going to do this why is it so true to you and listen to your gut as well you know you have to sit and I like to sit and meditate, you know, and think about <laughs> these things and then the answers come out. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the big why, I, I've learned it with a lot of people that I have interviewed, they always have big why. Like why you're doing this. It's exactly the same why am I doing this, <laughs> right? Uh, because if there's only like, it's not as important on on doing something without earning income so pretty much you won't do it right but if you have a big purpose of why you're doing this and it's part of your passions as well yeah and it's yeah. a good combination that you will continue doing it so i think Definitely. you gave a very good advice that understanding the why <laughs> yeah. you have yeah. to know why why are you going to push yourself every day to do something it's not going to be easy yeah <laughs> <True. laughs> it's true like people go to the gym so i think like sometimes people are like oh i want my body to look a certain way but maybe that might motivate some people but for a lot of people it you know there has to be something that's sustainable like a reason like you want to be really healthy or you haven't been very healthy and you want to get yourself better so it has to come from like a place inside i think what about for those people who aren't even you know figure out what their passions in life and uh, do you happen to have an idea or tips that you can share with us right now for people out there who's uh, trying to figure out or discovering their passion so then they can turn into the earlier question that i have which is passions into business but for those people who don't know what their passions yet how can you help them to figure it out this is hard but I think everyone has something that they love. Yeah. Like some people naturally, like there's things that people naturally are very good at. 
some people it might be like they have an eye for like creating beautiful things so mm-hmm. they have like they they can see something and they can see how how can i make this look really nice or i think everybody has a talent they can bring into the world agree yes so you know that's why i really don't think everyone can't be a doctor everyone can't be doing math everyone can't be an accountant because you know i don't know if you've ever heard this quote i've forgotten who actually says it but uh he says if you if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree mm-hmm. it will it will always think that it's like stupid basically yes yes yeah the fish's talent is not to climb a tree that fish is going to be amazing swimming in the water yes. so what i'm trying to say is if if you don't know what your passion is you you do really inside mm-hmm. you already know what you're really good at and what you like and i think though you have to think i think that's where it really comes down to sitting down and like meditating or journaling like i'm a big believer in those things because only with those things we live in such a busy world and sometimes you just need to cut all the noise out and just sit with yourself mm-hmm. and really think about what is it that i really like what do i really want to do and um I don't know if you know who Jay Shetty is. So oh, he does like yeah, he's really amazing. And I think it was either in his podcast or his book and once he was talking about how he does a meditation. Yeah. Uh, he does a meditation where he sees himself on his deathbed. <laughs> yes. And he asks like and you know and then he says a lot of the questions you might have about yourself, a lot of them will come out then because you'll think about you know like this is the last day i'm going to be living and you might think oh i wish i did this or why didn't i ever do this i used to love it so much so sometimes it just comes down to sitting down quietly asking yourself and really writing down all the things that you really like and then and i i am a big believer in the more you sit down and you're in tune with yourself slowly slowly i think doors will just start opening up for you. I agree. I agree. Well, the the doors may have always been there before, but you may <laughs> not have ever noticed them. Yeah. yeah, because you're just making yourself too busy with other things that you thought will be valuable for you, but then yet uh I I've, I've, I've learned this that uh with uh, one of the uh multi-passionate coaches that I am following. He said that I've been trying a lot of things and uh, there's always that voice inside of me telling me that there's something out there for you that this is not it you know so i think when you're sitting down you will get that whisper in your ears that yeah yeah you know you and most people already know the answers they just need to sit tune down in. and listen and tune into themselves yeah, yeah definitely agree. that's what i believe anyway But I mean I totally agree with you because that's what I also listen to and that's why how I came up with this <laughs> because yeah. I listen to myself and uh, also like building something that not only for um how do you call like only thinking about money but also bringing something valuable yeah. for the and community. that's yeah exactly and that's the thing I think a lot of people think um oh if I do something I'll, it'll only be successful if I make if success equals making money but that's mm-hmm. not true it's not it's not i mean if you make money along the way then that's you know that's yes. just a bonus yes. but it has to really really i think you're successful in in life when there's things that bring you joy and it fulfills you at the same time yes You know because I I come from you know I'm sure like you even know from like Philippines or there'll be people in the in, in India and they don't have a lot of money but they're mm-hmm. really doing like a job that they really like or they really they're really happy with and those people are happy you know because mm-hmm. they they're like living their passion or they're doing things so it doesn't always have to be something that's going to make you a revenue if it makes you that that's great but then have a job but then a passion or something that you love doing on the side because You know you have one life. You know you don't yeah. want to live it just a job all the time and just chasing money. Money is a materialistic thing. Yes, I agree. Love it. <laughs> I I think this is why I mean we kind of uh, align because yeah. we have the same mindset. <laughs> we have the same <laughs> ideas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
So as a mom, for you, as a as a as a wife, as an entrepreneur, yeah. as a woman, who also advocate a lot of uh, very very powerful uh, purpose in the community, like helping people in need, planting tree, empowering women, and I'm sure. You have a lot of things that you're doing, uh, projects here and there. So my love question is that, how do you keep yourself optimistic? <laughs> well, I like to. I like really. I I think in the way I keep myself positive and optimistic, I think comes down to how each day breaks down.、Mm-hmm. Because I, for me, I think I have a a lot on my plate. So.、Yeah. If I if I don't plan my life, then the whole day will just I could you could just rush around the whole day like a headless chicken between the kids, the business, you know, looking after the house. There's just a lot to do. So I I always like to the day before any day I always like to sit down and write at least three things that are the most important things that I need to do. For me, it's just about planning. Plan, plan, plan. I have lists everywhere. So, like, and I especially have this one book where I always write down everything that I need to do. And whenever I feel like I have a busy mind, where I think, right, there's all these things that need to be done for the business. Sometimes we we don't realize because we're not really aware of our thoughts. So, when you become more aware, the best thing to do is everything you have in your head, just write it down on a piece of paper, even if they're ideas or anything. Just have a、yeah. journal. Book and you write everything down, and then so if I ever have a day where I have so much to do, the night in the night I will sit down and write down right today.、Mm-hmm. The tasks are you know this for the Instagram or X Y and Z. These are the main things. But then I I always have another list which is like my list for home. So、mm-hmm. my main main priority it will always be my family and my kids. Yes.、Yeah, so、absolutely. I need to make sure that's like the first thing that's done at the end of the day because I think the main the main reason of having a business、mm-hmm. is because I want to be there with my family. So if I'm building the business, every day will always be like this coming forward now. So if I'm building the business, it's all I'm always going to be building the business. But I need to make sure that I always have that time. For my kids and my family, that they're eating well, that I'm eating well. You know, even small things like I think, right with Keen, I need to make sure today I sit down and I have like half an hour where there's no phones, nothing like that, and I just sit down with him and do homework with him. That's nice. You know, so these are only small things, but these are things every day that keep you positive and optimistic. Or right, I'm gonna switch off at this time and I'm gonna go for a walk with my kids, or I'm gonna take them to the park. And so all these things, it's like I like to plan so I can schedule these things in, and that's what every day keeps me optimistic and positive. And there's. When people think about building a business, it's a bit, it's a big task. But if you think about someone that goes to school or has a degree, you know, you don't do the whole degree in one week, do you? You, you have to like, you sit down, and the whole thing gets broken up slowly. So the same thing with like build, having a business or anything you want to build, you, you have to break it down into what you can manage.、Yes. You know, some people don't have a job or no kids or anything, so they'll have more time. But、yes. other people, they don't have as much time, and it's all about quality time as well. So、mm-hmm. if I know that my my I'm going to be with my little one, I will do like a bit of work here and there. But the rest of the time, I just know I'm not going to get quality work done. It's it's better for me to focus on her until I get a bit of a break, and then I can go and sit down and do my work properly. So I think it's just it's always planning, and don't put too much on your plate. Yeah. I think when you write it down, what are your plans are and most important, then you kind of look at okay, because I mean, in in my experience and what I'm doing right now as well is that I write down every day what I need to do and I know exactly what the timing. So you oh, know. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, actually, that's funny you say that. Today I was just thinking about right. I need to actually write down this. This task is going to be done at this time. Like I always have a rough idea in my head. Yeah. I was like. And then put a time with it as well. And all and another thing I forgot to say is actually always finding time for yourself. Every morning, I think the key for me is I like to always have a peaceful morning. I I don't I you know sometimes with kids you can't plan. So one of them might be 
unwell throwing up somewhere you know but I like if 90 99% of the time we have pretty chill that mornings but I like to always wake up before the kids wake up and I like to you know always have hot water in the morning and I'll sit down even if it's just half an hour or so and I'll I'll maybe meditate for like 15 minutes or so do a bit of journaling and all these things they like set you up for the right mindset for that day yeah that's that's really i think uh routine and planning is really powerful so thank you for sharing us how you keep yourself optimistic (laughs) yeah so it can be hard sometimes but sometimes you have to always look at the you have to look at the big picture yeah and i think you know um if planning and journaling or whatever new routine is something new definitely for you it takes time it takes practice but as long as you're you want to achieve things and you still want to have a quality time then i think you will find time yeah (laughs) definitely for everyone out there especially women right so where everyone can find you and support you and share i mean show some love and support and also like perhaps buying so it will be you can check out our instagram which is kiki and green um mm-hmm. the website is kikiandgreen.com um and at the moment all the products everything is available on amazon which people love because you can get next day shipping most of the time. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so currently it is available in the UK. It will ship to certain parts of Europe, but I think because of Brexit, there's a few things that have changed, but we are hoping by the time we get to in January mm-hmm. that we will be in UK and in Europe as well. So that's good. That's We're looking good. Good. To expand because we've had lots of questions from people, you know, in other in Europe or European countries, especially saying, "Oh, there's going to be more readily available here," but yes. it should be shipping from um, UK. But I think it will be a bit easier when it's on Amazon in Europe because you'll get shipped them a, a little bit yes. faster, and the shipping fee you won't have to pay for the shipping fee either. So that will be great for the European market. Yes, and I'm very grateful and thankful for everyone watching right now. Um, RuPaul, by the way, you know, extend her effort and time just to, uh, you know, ship on the, the package that I have ordered from Amazon. <laughs> Bless you. I know that was perfect. That was great. That was great. That was a great experience. And I'm really looking forward back then to kind of looking into it. And then when I saw it, oh my God, this is just like so amazing. You know, it's more amazing in actual. That in person, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, so it's amazing. So there you go. Thank you so much for sharing the the website and also you don't have Facebook or it's the same as Kiki Green or it's just actually we're not really on Facebook, but I, that is something I will be looking into at some point. Yeah, I mean because uh, Facebook and Instagram they're in one company. They can anyway. link. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. once you have maybe Instagram, you could just link into to your. Facebook, provided that your name is not, it's still available as a name. Hopefully, yeah. (laughs) I think so too. (laughs) And once again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you for everything that you committed and uh, taking time on uh, participating on this uh, Empower Your Life. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, Cindy. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that interview and I hope you find it inspiring and motivating. Remember, stay optimistic and keep taking action slowly but surely for your big dreams. Thank you once again and I'll see you on the next episode here at Empower Your Life.